Hi, I'm Monica and thanks for watching my video. So when I left CHS, um, I went to the University of Kent to study Drama and Theatre Studies. Um, however, the course was not exactly what I expected it to be. It was um, a fully like academic course. I think performance was only 10% or 15% of the course. And I knew I wanted to be an actor and I wanted to do a more practical acting course. So after the first year, I ended up leaving and coming back to Manchester and reapplying for drama schools to try and get onto a fully vocational acting course. During that year off, I spent a lot of time watching films, mostly independent and foreign films, and then I absolutely fell in love with indie films and foreign cinema. So when I was reapplying this second time around for drama school, um, I did much better than the first. First time I didn't get into a drama school. Second time I got into the Arden School of Theatre, which is in Manchester. And um, in that summer before I started at Arden, I went and did eight weeks of a summer school at Harvard University in America near Boston. And that was in intermediate acting. And that was a really good course. We were specifically working on duologues and monologues, which was something I felt very self-conscious of at the time. So it was really good that I ended up doing that like just before I started drama school. At drama school, I learned a lot. I wouldn't be the actor I am today if I hadn't have gone. Um, I really like chopped and changed, took things, techniques that I liked and wove them into you know my own practice essentially. However, there was a lot of things that were really challenging and I didn't exactly enjoy about, about drama school and they're things that I've heard people at other drama schools mention as well. However, you know, I wouldn't be the actor I am today, so I wouldn't go back and change not going. I'm, I am really glad I went. So in our third year, I was lucky that I left with an acting job. I'd gotten a job performing a one woman play at the People's History Museum, which is on Deansgate, maybe you know it. Um, I still work there performing this one woman play. It's a permanent acting job, which is really hard to come by. Um, and it's it's been amazing and I've been doing it for many, many, many years now. Um, but on the other hand, in our third year, we had a showcase right at the end. So we all did a performance and they invite agents and casting directors um, and other people from the industry to come and see it. And unfortunately, for some reason, for our year, hardly anybody came. I think we had one casting director come, not a single agent. It was really, really strange. They'd never had that before and they never had that situation again. It was just our year. And so I left drama school without an agent and it ended up taking me two years after finishing uni before I actually managed to sign with my first agency. So what I do on a weekly, monthly basis is quite varied. Um, as I'm self-employed, I'm an actor, but you don't always have acting jobs. Um, that's the thing about this industry and this career. Um, I spend a lot of time auditioning. I'd say that is part of the job in itself. You might spend 80%, 85% auditioning for jobs than actually like working on a job. And then I'll be doing acting jobs when I get them in TV, independent film, commercials, um, educational theatre like at the museum and sometimes I do some theatre in schools um, and voice work as well. I audition for a lot of professional theatre but don't often get the job, not sure why that is, um, but I guess I had a small TV job last year, which I really loved, which was on the BBC show Years and Years. And that was an incredible experience. I really enjoyed it. I also work as an assistant in filmmaking workshops, creative career workshops, creative writing workshops, arts workshops in general. And I do this at Home Manchester, which is a cinema, theatre, art gallery, um, all in one building just near Oxford Road. And I've been doing that for a few years. I also have a part-time job at a skate park near Manchester Piccadilly. It's called Projects MCR. I've been working there for a few years um, in their office and also as a skateboard coach. I love this job because it keeps my skills up. It keeps me skateboarding. And also it's nice to have just those regular one or two shifts a week to make sure that there is still income coming in no matter what 
is happening in my other self-employed work. I also work for film festivals, short film festivals to be specific, um, as a programmer. And what that means is I help select the short films that we choose to play in the festival and to be up for awards. I've also worked for the Kino Shorts Festival as a, as a juror member where I watch all the final films and me and, a different, and another team choose who wins what prize and what accolade. More recently in the past year, it's not been very long, I've been working uh, in distribution of independent film. Um, and marketing for independent films. So I've led Manchester campaigns for films coming out. Um, I've done it for mid 90s, which was the Jonah Hill skateboarding film, Skate Kitchen, which was the female skateboarding film. What else? Um, the Chambra, which was uh, exec produced by Martin Scorsese. Um, Sweet Country, which was a really good Australian film. Um, and what that entails is uh, I have about four weeks where I work part-time pretty much, but I can schedule it around my own schedule so I can make those hours up myself, basically. And you work on one city, so for me it's Manchester, and I design a whole marketing campaign based around getting this film seen by the people who will love it the most. So by the target target audience, which is usually young people and the community that the film is set around and within. I've also got two YouTube channels I've been running for several years. One is an ASMR relaxation channel and one is just a general channel where I do vlogs, podcasts, um, acting videos, talking about tips, um, and at the moment, some quarantine videos. And the final thing that I've got going on is that um, I'm a landlord as well. Um, very fortunately, I've inherited a couple of properties and I'm a landlord for those properties. Really, I think there's a lot of opportunities for young people to work um, in the industry that I do, whether that's the acting industry or the film industry or skateboarding or YouTube and um, there's a lot going on and I think some of those things you can actually do now while you're still in school as well so the first place you can look is um, I just mentioned it before home Manchester um, which is a cinema art gallery theatre they do a lot of workshops for young people based around you know acting um, filmmaking art creative writing, theatre skills, so things um, like stage management, set design, sound, all those theatrical tech jobs. Um, and they also do the BFI Film Academy, which is an eight week course that runs from October to December. And you learn film studies, film history, and also film uh, making workshops. You learn how to make films and you also make a film on your like October half term as well um, during that week. And it's a really good course. I'm not sure if it's gonna run this year because of coronavirus, but definitely keep an eye on that one on the home website. At home, they also have um, something called the Young Programmers Scheme, which is where young people get given a brief by the, the film team um, on a certain season. So whether that be like, I don't know, um, horror or um, 60s films, something really specific. They'll give you a brief and then a group of young people will um, each program one feature film um, to play within that and that's a really good scheme as well so keep an eye on that for when they're looking for their new team. Also if you want to study filmmaking at a degree level there's a lot of places you can do that in Manchester and in the country in general but specifically in Manchester you can do it at Salford and um, they've got a good media course and also work quite closely with the BBC. There's also Futureworks and um, they're really good filmmaking and uh, filmmaking and what else do they do? They do sound and composing as well, I think there. Um, and then Man Met have a really good filmmaking course as well. Um, and at all three of those universities, I know a few of the lecturers and a few of the people who teach filmmaking there and they're all fantastic. So I would highly recommend those. There's also something called Kino Cabarets. This is something that you can only do when you're 18 and above. 
um, but hopefully that's not long for you to wait for. What it is, it's like a 48 hour or 36 hour filmmaking challenge. So loads of people get together, you buy tickets, normally like 10 pounds, 20 pounds. And um, from all different principles, you'll have actors, you'll have camera operators, you'll have sound operators, directors, writers, they all come together and you've got those two days to make films from start to finish. Um, using only the people who are on the course and you have to screen it at the end. And the screening at the end is always really fun. So this is a great way to uh, practice, experience, um, working on films or genres you wouldn't normally work on, working with people, uh, lots of different people, lots of different teams. Um, as an actor, I've always loved it because it means I can play like eight different roles in two days, which is a lot of fun and gets me out of my comfort zone massively. Um, and also means that I've ended up making films of my own, writing and directing films of my own, um, which I'm not sure is something that I would have really been driven towards if I hadn't been on these Kino cabarets. Um, and also Kino cabarets are fantastic if you do a degree, but you have done it in something else, so not filmmaking um, and not, you know, the arts uh, in that, that sense. Um, Kino Cabaret, you can develop a portfolio, you can start practicing writing um, and you can really start to develop yourself as a filmmaker and I don't think you necessarily have to have a degree in film to be a filmmaker at all. Um, there's a really good friend of mine who uh, actually did politics at university but he knew he didn't want a career in politics um, and he ended up doing the BFI Film Academy at home, which was the corner house at the time, which I just mentioned, the eight week film academy course. And then he did like six, seven, eight Kino cabarets and he was a really good filmmaker and like that's all he needed. He, you know, he, he learned at the BFI what, how to make film tech, technically, tech wise. And then at the Kino cabarets, he just practiced making films and writing stories. Um, and he's a really good filmmaker. I think we're really lucky that we've got places at the moment like YouTube, TikTok. Um, I'm sure there's probably gonna be another one soon where you can film stuff with your friends at home or out and about and just put it straight out into the world onto the internet. And it's a really good place to just start playing around with different stories, different characters, just have some fun, make something with some friends of yours and put it out there and it will start to help you hone in on what you enjoy doing, what do you enjoy making and what do you feel you know you make best, like where are your strengths and where are your weaknesses if you want to like work on something and get better in certain areas. Um, so I really recommend just making videos, making little films and just putting them out there. Now with me working at the skate park, that was a job I really just sort of fell into. And I think as a young person, um, I think the moral in that is that your hobbies and the things that you enjoy can become a job. Like when I started skateboarding, I never in a million years thought I was gonna get a job working in, in skateboarding, but um, I have and it just kind of happened really naturally and I think it's important to pursue all f facades of yourself. Facades? Of you is that the right word? All versions of yourself, all parts of yourself which like different things, you know, you might have really different hobbies, really different interests and I think if you enjoy them, keep pursuing them and keep enjoying them because you never know what might come from it or what you might create from that particular particular job and I think if you want to be an actor there's a lot of opportunities for young people and um, to do that so you could go to contact theatre they have a really good young people's program you can do amateur dramatics I know Altrincham Garrick Theatre do a lot of plays there's the Stockport Garrick Theatre they do a lot of plays too um, and also at home they do a young people's theatre production called National Connections, I think, and they do that once a year. So that could be a place that you want to look to. Um, you know, experimenting with characters and putting it on YouTube and TikTok, that would work really well. Um, when you're over 18, going to a Kino Cabaret to gain some experience, you could go having never taken an acting class a day in your life and go to a Kino Cabaret and be an actor and be in like five, six films and just, you know, try it, see what you think. Um, also at school, there might be some school plays that you can do. Um, at, when I was at CHS, I was never selected to be on any of the school plays. Um, and 
that don't let that dishearten you if you've been in a similar position and um, I wasn't on any of the sports teams I wasn't selected for sports I wasn't selected for any of the plays but I work in skateboarding and I'm a professional actor now so don't let things like that stop you as an actor there's roles available for every age um so there's opportunities out there no matter what age you are and I think with the way technology and streaming is um, it's so amazing and it's so popular and it's only going to get better that I think there will always be a lot of opportunities as an actor there will always be things being made um, and it's only going to get more and more so there's a lot of opportunities out there on one hand being an actor, it's challenging because um, it's a completely unregulated industry generally. Um, there's no set path that you take, you know, like, oh, I do a degree and then, you know, I can get an interview here and I can get a job. There's no set path. Like every single actor's path is going to be uh, very different. And in a way that means it's challenging because sometimes it's like, oh, well, what do I do next? I want to get here and I have no idea how to get there. But in another way, it's an opportunity because you can make your own path and there's not necessarily rights and wrongs. Um, and there's a lot of places within the industry that you can work. You can do voice work, you can do podcasts, you can do plays. Fringe theatre is, is really good. That's like independent theatre that's on the side of professional theatre. There's some fantastic fringe productions. There's a lot of fringe theatre in Manchester too. Um, you can work on short films, you can work on independent films. The British film industry is booming and it's fantastic. Um, and I think there's just a lot of opportunities for everybody because we've got such a strong filmmaking culture and film industry in the UK. And now that a lot of places are auditioning um, via self-tape, it means you can tape for anything in the country, you can tape for anything in the UK, you can tape for something, you know, on the other side of the world. And it's just the opportunities are now so much vaster because we can just self-tape audition. The kind of skills that you need to work in the industries that I do, so this goes for being an actor or working in the film industry in different aspects, um, or working in education with uh, acting and filmmaking um, is that you need to do networking quite often and I hate that word because it just makes it sound really horrible uh, but essentially it's just making friends um, networking is just making friends and most of the time people are really friendly and I think if somebody doesn't want to make a connection um, it, you can you can sense that it's it, they just won't get back to you or then it's going to be clear it's going to be clear um but networking is so important because the industry doesn't have this set path you kind of have to build your own so you have to build a, a network of connections around you you've got to build a circle around you um and a lot of the time you might get opportunities through people that you already know um so i think this is a really key thing to have like good people skills and social skills to be able to make connections and network with people and um, going to events is brilliant for this going to like film screenings film festivals um going to the theater hanging around afterwards to meet people um and just chat to them on a really human level um very relaxed and i think the best networking happens when you don't realize that you're networking when it's you know quite relaxed and you're just chatting to people and um, sometimes that's when the best connections come about. As an actor, you can take classes in lots of different ways. You don't necessarily have to do a degree in acting. You don't have to necessarily have been doing drama at school. And um, there's a lot of classes out there available, a lot of different techniques, and you can sort of dip and try a lot of different things to help put together, you know, what works for you as an actor. Um, and being able to not only use techniques as an actor, but be able to listen to your gut instincts is really important because a lot of the time, whatever your instinct is, for some reason, that must be really real within you as a human being. And therefore, if you follow that instinct in the character, it's going to be really real to that character you're portraying. Does that make sense? Um, and it's really good for last minute auditions because they do happen from time to time. Quite often, really, you get a last minute audition, you've got, you know, a six page script that you need to tape for the next day. 
and you've got to listen to those instincts in order to like bring something to that script and really bring it to life. I think being knowledgeable is a good skill to have, being knowledgeable about this field that interests you in this field that you want to work in. So watch everything you can, watch all the films, watch all the TV, go to the theatre, um, listen to the podcast, listen to radio plays, watch and listen to everything and sort of keep an eye on what names are cropping up again. So who's produced it? Who's directed it? Who was the casting director? Um, who's the executive producer? And when it comes to films, who are the companies that are um, the distribution companies and the production companies? So they will usually have their emblems right at the beginning of the film. You know, when the logos come up, pay attention to those logos and you'll start to see which film companies that you like more um, and who maybe you'd want to work with. And I think it starts spreadsheet or write in a notebook, try and collate all these things that you're watching and it will start to connect and things will start to come together and you'll start to see what things that you like what makes you feel passionate what people and what production companies you need to reach out to who's your target for people you want to make those network connections with um, and I think if you're wanting to be an actor when you see uh, a character and you think I could play that or that that's so me that have a look at that actor, what else have they played? Because um, if they're playing roles that you think you could play, if you follow their journey, you might be able to find something to help yourself. Um, and also you might be able to learn more about the kind of characters you are able to play and the depth that you can bring. Um, and also your agent, as an actor is your lifeline. I'd say your agent in a way is one of your skills because you need one who gets you as a person, understands who you are as an individual, as a person. Um, and so you can have a really good professional relationship so that they're able to actually find auditions for you and find jobs that are right for you and that you stand good chances of actually getting. Another skill is don't be afraid to ask to be involved. Um, in this industry in general, if you don't ask, sometimes you don't get. People need to know that you're interested in wanting to do whatever it is you are trying to do. And I think uh, there's no harm in saying, oh, you know, I really like what you're doing. Um, if there was ever a time when you needed some help, I'd love to get involved. Um, and if it doesn't feel right to ask that question, what you can do instead is say, um, you know, I'd like to, let's let's meet up and have a coffee sometime and a chat. Keep it super casual. Try and make that connection with that person because you know that, you know, you'd like to work with that person. Maybe it feels too soon to ask to be involved. Just ask, ask for a coffee and a chat. And then during that coffee and chat, you can find out more information about what they do and, and let them know that you're interested in being involved. And most of the time, people are really nice and quite forthcoming when it comes to this kind of stuff. And everybody does it. So it's kind of a formality. People know that people want to meet up and have chats and have a coffee. Um, it's kind of part of the, what's the word? It's kind of part of the job in a way. Um, so when, when you ask that, people will know what you mean and they should be pretty nice about it. In terms of learning filmmaking skills, there's a lot of places you can learn. YouTube's fantastic. You can learn loads of stuff about how to make films on YouTube. Um, not only like in the creative studio, I think YouTube themselves make a bunch of like tutorials, but there's so many people who've like put up, um, put up videos about how to make films, how to use cameras. You can even look up specific, you know, the specific phone you have and somebody will have made a video about how to use the camera settings to make a good film. Um, there's an app called Filmic Pro. It's really, really good. You can shoot films with that, with that app. I'd really recommend it. There's even lenses you can get to put on your phone. Um, but there's so many workshops to learn how to make films, the principles behind it. And I think if you want to make films, the, they are skills that you you need you need to have. Um, even if you're not wanting to be a camera operator or you're not wanting to work in sound, it's, it would be good if you knew how those elements work and why they come together as they do to create a good film. 
Oh, a good TV show. Watching skills. If you want to work in film festivals as a programmer or in film marketing, like I've done, um, watching is key. When you watch loads of stuff, you kind of start being able to pick things out and start to, you start to see conventions, you start to see uh, differences in storytelling, differences in concept as well. If you're watching something really abstract, there'll be differences in concept. Like the, if something's abstract but has such a strong, clear concept, you prob you might like it more than something that's abstract, really floaty concept, not quite clear. I don't know, a lot of it comes down to taste, but watching things is is really paramount in you know being a programmer um being a film juror member um because you need to know you need to learn about what you're watching and how to break that down and how to assess it having social media skills is really key and i'm sure you've all got fantastic social media skills um there's a lot that you can do on social media and i think it's it's used a lot in work life as well um for the marketing, film marketing jobs that I do. Most of it is via social media, I'd say. I usually plan one or two big events to go along the film coming out. But other than that, most things are reaching out to people through social media or emailing them. Um, so that's really key. And I think if you're self-employed as well, um, you've got to have a strong social media presence and know how to how to run your own accounts as well to the highest point because I think sometimes employers I think they are looking at your social media accounts I can't say that for sure but I have a feeling that I think they are so your social media skills need to be good I think the industries will change and they will um, get better to be honest I think with streaming being so great oh my god I just love binge watching stuff with that being so good, I think there's only going to be more streaming services, more streaming apps. There'll be more studios opening up, like Amazon have their own studio, Apple have their own studio. Um, Netflix really started it all, but I think it's going to keep rolling and there's going to be more studios popping up again and again. Um, and I just think it's fantastic. There's only going to be more opportunities in the sort of recorded screen area, TV, film, podcasts, radio plays, maybe. Um, there's only going to be more than that, more of that. In theatre, I'm not quite sure how theatre is going to go down. I think it could, there could end up being more theatre. I think fringe theatre is massive and that could just keep growing and growing. And that's like the independent theatre scene I mentioned earlier. That could keep growing and maybe morph into something else, possibly. Um, I think film festivals could change. There could end up being... TV festivals as well and yeah TV festivals for like people making their own web series and, and like online content festivals I think that's possible I think it's a cool idea I'd quite like that um, and I think in a lot of ways casting is changing for the better in terms of its representation when it comes to when it comes to race, disability, sexuality. I'm hoping more and more as things go on, there'll be um, more real stories and it'll be less stereotyped characters that we still see in our media. Um, I think it will change and I think it will change for the better. My advice would be, I think, just be bold and go for it and don't be afraid to ask for what you want. You need to be able to sort of grab things um, and make things happen yourself um, because you're working for yourself as a freelancer, as being self-employed. You need to be able to just go for it and not be afraid of it. Um, in terms of acting, you can have an agent at any age. So while still in school, you could have an agent and be going for acting jobs if your parents or guardians are happy with you with you doing that um i think if you are going to do that have a good headshot um always use like a reputable headshot photographer to do your headshots and i've had headshots done before by really good friends of mine who are fantastic photographers but they don't necessarily specialize in headshot photography and i think when i've gone to a headshot photographer it makes 
the most difference because they they know how to shoot you and get the best for helping you get a job and I think it's always good to go with with a headshot photographer and there's a lot there's quite a lot to choose from in Manchester and there's a guy in Chester as well who's really really good not too far away and um, if you want to work in filmmaking or tv producing theatre tech film festivals film marketing then watch everything just consume lots and lots of content and really start to pick out what you like which production companies you like um, and why as well and you'll start to figure out where you want to work within this industry and as an actor I think to develop a strong sense of self is really important because you're gonna get a lot of rejection a lot on a daily basis and sometimes there might be months that go by maybe even a year or more where you don't have a single acting job and that can be really hard on on the soul and on self-esteem and I think it's good to have a strong sense of who you are because people will, you'll feel like people are telling you, oh, you're not right for this or you are right for that or no, I don't see you in this way, I don't see you in that way and being very, you know, making judgments on on you, what, how you come across as a person or the way that you look and it's, it's really important to have a strong sense of you knowing who you are because other people will have opinions of who they think you are, but they are just that, they're just opinions. The only truth is how you feel about yourself. That's the truth, and that, that is who you are, how you feel you are, if that makes sense. So it's good to just have a really strong sense of who you are and trust that it's okay if somebody thinks that that is not right for the job. It's, it's okay, it's gonna be okay. Just try and move past it and keep yourself busy. In terms of advice, um, I'm sure in your acting career, at some point you're gonna need to do a monologue, whether that's for your drama school auditions or other type of audition or performance, you're gonna need to do a monologue. So there's two books that I'd recommend. One is um, The Actor's Guide to Performing Shakespeare by Mad Harold, Mad with two Ds. I bought this on Amazon years ago. It's fantastic. It just breaks down how to do a Shakespeare monologue from start to finish. It's really, really good. I mean, look at, you can see my, it's full of post-its, highlighting. Fantastic. I honestly think this is what got me into drama school was just having this book. Shakespeare can be really difficult. And the other book that I have, um, which has been really helpful, is an audition monologue book for actors of colour. This is a reasonably new book. It only came out um, about a year ago, but it's the first book of its kind. Um, and I'd highly recommend it if you need monologues and you're an actor of colour. Um, you can buy it on oberonbooks.com. That's it. oberonbooks.com. I don't think it's on Amazon yet. It might be, but very good it's important to have hobbies hobbies shape who you are and um, they are really good sometimes life lessons it can teach you experiences it can teach you about people if you're doing something in a team or doing a team sport it shapes you um and i think you need to keep doing these extra extracurricular things whether it's music playing an instrument at the end of the day it will become skills on your it does become skills on your CV if you want to be an actor, you know, you can then write down, you know, you play guitar and uh, you're a skateboarder. I'm just saying that because I play guitar and I'm a skateboarder, but whatever it is that you do, um, it can be on your CV. But also it's important that acting and the film world is not the only things that are happening in your life because being interested in other things shapes you, makes you the person that you are today, it widens your experiences um, and you never know one of those might become a job for you as well. I think ultimately every sector is competitive. Um, it, I think everything's competitive. I know the acting industry is, is very competitive but there's nothing that isn't competitive and I think if you really want it, whatever that is, if you work hard and you're persistent, you'll get what you want. And I think that's that's the main the main thing is just working hard, being persistent, don't give up. I'm going to send some links over to the CHS alumni team as well in case you want to have a look at my CV or I don't know my show reel or something. I'll leave it linked with them 
So you can access that if you need to. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, and I think CHS are looking to do one-to-ones soon. So if anybody's interested in doing a one-to-one -one with me and asking specific questions, I would be absolutely happy to answer any of your questions. So stay safe, stay at home, and thanks for watching.